Okay, hey guys, I am back finally with the third part to Tenya Ida X Listener. This one took me so long to make because I didn't know how to script a, a date. So yeah, and I'm gonna hope that I get it right because I don't want to make it awkward. And it's probably gonna be the longest out of all the rest of the installments to this, but okay. Also, got a new microphone. You like it? And uh, I just turned 18 on December 3rd, so now I can swear. It means I can turn into Katsuki Bakugo whenever the fuck I want. <laughs> but yeah, uh, let's get into it. The sound of your alarm clock hit your ears and you immediately sat up and turned the god awful thing off while debating whether or not to throw the thing away. Getting off your bed and gathering some clothes, you headed to your dorm shower. After a few minutes of bubbles gracing your figure, you dried off, freshened up, and got dressed. You finally walked out of the dorm and called Ida. He picked up and answered with the voice that never failed to make you internally melt. Hello? Hey Ida, you said you needed to ask me something? What was it? Oh, right. Uh, just head over to the 3A dorms. I should be out shortly. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll see you there then. See you there, darling. You ended the call and stood there silently on the concrete a red hue decorating your face. After a few minutes, you continued walking, and sooner or later, you came across 3A's dorms. You leisurely stepped inside and watched the door as it closed slowly. You heard a familiar voice. Why, hello there, Monami! You jumped, startled by the sudden noise, and you shot your head to the other side of the lobby. You relaxed your scared expression almost immediately after you realized it was Aoyama. The look on your face that was at first shock, then a blank stare, had turned into slight aggravation. Aoyama, don't... don't scare me like that, you said annoyed. Aoyama apologized and signaled for you to come sit with him on the couch. You took a seat next to him. Anyways, what brings you here? Aoyama questioned. Oh, Ida needed to ask me something. Hearing this, Aoyama smirked and put his hand over his chin. I see what's happening here, he said smugly, making you hum in confusion. You two are lovebirds, aren't you? You slightly screeched with a deep blush coating your face. I... Uh, oh, Yama, that's none of your... Uh, uh. But before you could continue your miniature tangent, Ida entered. Why, hello there, Yen and Aoyama. The blondie got up. Well, I'll see to it that the both of you get your privacy. Aoyama! But before you could lecture him, he was gone. You turned your head back to Ida. You said that you needed to ask me something? Oh, right. I... Uh... Ida ran through the plan a thousand times in his head. And yet, here he was, being a shaking, stuttering mess right in front of the person he loves. You took note of his behavior. Uh, you all right there? Ida noticeably jumped a bit before speaking. I was wondering if you'd like to go out with me on a date at Tacoba Park at 7.40 p.m. But you don't have to if you don't want to. At first, your eyes flew wide open, surprised by this. But you gave him a warm smile as a blush came to your face. Oh, how sweet of you. 
Of course, I'd love to. Plus, I'm free today, so don't worry. That smile with the rush of blood to your face. It made him turn all gooey inside. I... Well, it's settled then. I'll see you there. You got all smug, and in the most tempting voice of yours, See you there, dearie. You said as you got up to leave. You didn't notice because you had your back turned to him, but he was a flushed mess. You got back to your dorm at 12.20 p.m., leaving you with 7 hours and 20 minutes. Although you had all the time in the world to get ready, you still panicked on what to wear, if you should touch up your face, how to style your hair. Before you started anything, you decided to make him a gift. You didn't know what to make for him at first, but eventually you just settled on making him a handmade handkerchief. It took you about six hours to finish it, and when you saw the time, you were terrified. You were most definitely going to be late now. Ah! I'm so screwed! But after a while, you found something that you thought would be perfect. After taking a shower, drying off, putting on lotion, body mist, and your clothes, you'd lost track of time. While you were brushing your hair, you looked over to the nearest clock to see that it was already 7.30 p.m. You were sent into a panic. You, not caring too much about your hair getting done, you grabbed your tote bag, put your spray handkerchief, a comb inside of it, and you booked it out of the door, brush in hand. You never stopped running, not even when you saw the beach. It felt like needles were stabbing your throat and lungs as you ran. And not too soon after, you bumped into someone and landed right on the ground. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't see you there. You looked up, and your gaze met Tenya's eyes. Your face now burning up. Ah! Ida! I'm really sorry! He offered you his hand and helped you up. It's quite alright. Even though I was running late and I... I rammed right into you. Like I said, it's fine. Don't worry so much. I... Okay. While still holding your hand, he walked you over to a spot on the beach. He reached into an ornate basket he was carrying and placed a blanket on the sand. He sat down and patted the spot next to him. You took a seat next to him. You just took in the scenery with him as you both talked about the miniature things in your lives. Doing this helped the both of you vent and release your frustrations, even if it was just by a little. But the thing that scares me the most is, I don't know who did this to her. And what's more is, I don't know where they are. Ida just sat there, taking in all the information that you just spilled on him. He looked like he wanted to say something, but he kept biting his tongue. I'm sorry for that. It's just... I'm so mad, but so scared. I want to beat the stuff out of who did that crap, but I know I'm too weak, and I can't fight back. It's just that I'm... I'm scared, Ida. But my mom, she deserves justice. She might not be. You stopped, sighed, and laid down on the sheet. You now looked up at the night sky and watched as it slowly filled up with sparkles. It's quite all right, but don't be scared. I will protect you. The stress, fear, and anger that was stirring inside of you melted away right after that statement. Thank you so much, Ida. But let's just change the subject. Talking about all this bad stuff, it's just bringing back 
horrible memories? He nodded. Agreed. Ida looked down into your eyes as the stars calmed any remaining nerves of yours. And he piped up. You know, at first I didn't know what to call you. I was originally planning on calling you Darling. But I think I have something better in mind. You hummed in confusion. Ida, with a relaxed and happy expression, replied, By the way your eyes twinkle as you look up into the lovely night sky, I shall call you my star. How does that sound? It's wonderful. Oh, right, I almost forgot. You reached into your bag and pulled out the handkerchief. I made this for you, but I'll have to admit, I'm not the best at making stuff like this. You slightly shivered as you handed him the neatly crafted cloth. Oh, thank you, my star. It's lovely. I'm sorry that this isn't crafted, but I thought that since we were friends not too long ago, I'd use my knowledge on you to choose some gifts. You sat up slightly and looked at him. He grabbed the basket and handed it to you. Inside were a bunch of your favorite snacks, some blue papers, and some white pens. Very fitting seeing as you were a support class student. Oh, Ida, thank you so much. No problem. You are my star after all. The rest of the date was just filled with taking in the moment and each other's company. Afterwards, the both of you strolled back to Heights Alliance together. Once you two had made it to the pathway of the dorms, you abruptly stopped. Hey, Ida! Yes, my star? Come here for a sec. He walked a bit closer to you, confused. The situation was unclear to him until you put your hands on his face and kissed him for a bit. When the both of you pulled away, your face was slightly tinted with a blush, while Edith's Saj was a red mess. I love you. I love you too, my star. You gave him a smile as you parted ways with him for the night. All right, I did it. <laughs> this took me so long to do. Ah. <laughs> but uh, part four is coming out soon. Hope you're prepared. <laughs>